This episode of Maximum Tips is brought to you by giftsjustforyou.shop. Check out the description today to browse their fine catalog of jewelry, statues, and wind chimes to get for your loved ones. Head on over now to find out more. Whether you grew up in the 80s or 90s, chances are you played a lot of old school games such as Super Mario Brothers, Mortal Kombat, and even Clay Fighter? Remember that was a thing? And nowadays, it's more difficult to try to find that nostalgia you just love so much. Unless you're a big mega global corporation that allows you to play some of their old school classics. Sure, there are online stores like GOG that like to nurture that nostalgia, especially on the PC front. But what about on the console side? Like looking up, let's say, GoldenEye on the N64. All right, it's literally impossible to try to find a copy and play it unless you have one stored in your garage somewhere. Yeah, seriously, literally one of the only ways to play that game is to do an eBay search. That or you can play the remake. Oh. So in a sense, if you want to play that particular game, you're going to have to get creative. So today we're going to take the chance to find an easier solution to play some of these old school classics, either on a monitor, TV, or on vacation somewhere. So today on Maximum Tips, we're going to take a look at how to do so on our good old friend, the Raspberry Pi. Wait, didn't I cover this in a previous episode? Oh right, I did. But we're going to be using a different solution called Laka. So without further ado, let's rock. It's showtime! Now, if you ever messed with emulation on the Raspberry Pi before, you probably heard of a bunch of distros that came with it, such as Emulation Station, RetroArch, or RetroPie. Oftentimes on the internet, people will reference RetroPie as being one of the more customizable options when you're trying to get into the emulation space. And indeed it is, it has a lot of neat features. The Laka is pretty different. Unlike RetroPie, Laka is directly coded using the RetroArch interface, which is a pretty popular multi-emulator solution. This offers multiple advantages, including a consistent and less repetitive way of configuring your controls, ROMs that load much easier when they're under the same GUI and emulator structure, and it's just easier to configure overall. Well, personally, for me. But that said, we're not just gonna load some ROMs and just troubleshoot to make sure the emulator works properly, but we're also gonna take a look at the neat little features that Laka has to offer. So with that said, let's go over what we'll need in order to make this gaming machine possible. The first thing we'll need, of course, is the Raspberry Pi, more specifically the third iteration of the hardware. The newest one, being the fourth, just came out, so I didn't have time to obtain it. But I'm gonna go with mine, since I know Laka has been playtested to work on it, so there will be a less likely chance of errors occurring. I also like this particular version due to the built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi support, without resorting to buying USB adapters. We'll also need a micro SD card for Laka's distro, so in order to write data to it, you'll probably need an adapter for your PC so you can connect to it. This is a good sizable one, but you can get a bigger one if you choose to. I just happen to have this one lying around. You can easily get a bigger one on Amazon for much less, especially when they're on sale. Laka also supports external USB storage, but personally I like using the micro SD card since the read and write speeds are quite fast. This is also optional, but if you do care about dust, I would invest in a case such as this one that came with my Raspberry Pi. I know it's a minuscule thing, but you'll thank me later. Of course, we also need the things that came with the Raspberry Pi, such as the power supply and HDMI cable. I don't know about you, but these items came with mine. Then of course we need our input devices. I for one am going with the Xbox 360 controller since that's worked for me in the past, and Laka already has auto hotkeys set up for it. Of course you can use any controller you want that has a USB connection, but the reason why I also mentioned Bluetooth is that this distro also supports PlayStation controllers as well, and they're known for using Bluetooth. So with that said, let's rock! <sighs> So what we're gonna do is plug in our micro SD card into our computer first, just so we can have it ready to go. Next on our web browser, we're gonna go to laka.tv and the Laka homepage should appear. Throughout this tutorial, you can refer back to this website if you have any questions at all. They have a really useful wiki page for any trouble that you might run into. Now on the top of the page, we're gonna click get. 
then get Laka, then you're going to select your operating system, in this case we're using Windows, and then you're going to select which hardware that you have, of course the Raspberry Pi 3. But if you have something different, click on something else. Then we're going to click download Laka, and then just wait for it to finish. Now that we have our file, we're going to download another program called Etcher. This will allow us to write the Laka image to our microSD card. So we're going to go on here and click which version you would like. I'm selecting the portable version, but if you want to, you can easily install it for yourself. Now under our PC settings, we're going to double check to make sure that our microSD card is ready to be written upon. If you need to clear some space for it or format it, I recommend downloading the program SD Formatter. But for now, this is just fine. Now under our Laka zip file, we're going to extract the file onto the desktop. And then we're going to open Etcher. And under Etcher, we're going to drag the Laka.img file into the program. And then click Select Target and then our microSD card. Make sure that the letter is correct. And then click Flash. And in a couple minutes, it should be written on your microSD card. So now we're going to double check just to make sure that Laka boots up. And look at that. As you can see, Laka reminds you of the old PS3 XMB UI, which is fine because it's completely simple and easy to manage. So now that we booted up into our system, we're gonna add some games. But first, I think it's a good idea to connect our Raspberry Pi to our Wi-Fi network. So we're gonna go to Settings, Wi-Fi, and then select your Wi-Fi network. Then enter the password, and now Laka should be able to connect to the internet, as well as doing the next thing we're going to do, transfer our ROMs from our PC to Laka itself. But first, we have to enable a couple of things to be able to do that. So underneath services, you're going to see three options, and one by one, you're just going to turn them on. SSH and Samba are required in order to transfer ROMs over a network, and Bluetooth just because, why not? We'll also need the IP address of the Pi itself. If you don't know what an IP address is, it's basically a network address. Like a home address basically, but for computers. So remember to copy this number down. Now you can access the Pi in different ways. One of the more popular ways is to do it through the Windows Explorer tab, but this time I would like to use an FTP program. So I downloaded a program called WinSCP. You can also use other popular FTP programs, but I prefer this version just because the interface is more user-friendly to me. A window will pop up when you first open it. Underneath hostname, you're going to put in that IP address that I highlighted. Then under username and password, you're going to type in root for both. And now the file system for the Raspberry Pi should appear. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of folders, and it may look intimidating, but don't worry, I'll explain through it as easily as possible. The only things we're going to focus on right now are the ROMs folder and the system folder. So for the purposes of this video today, I'm going to demonstrate how Laka works and how it performs with many different kinds of ROMs. And displayed here are the systems that we're going to test. The Sega Genesis, the N64, the NES, the PlayStation, and the Super NES. Mostly these are the systems that I grew up with, so I figured that these would be perfect. But as you can see, I have some games in each folder, and they vary quite differently. Now we won't test every other game, but this will give you an idea on what games could be on Laka. As you can see, some of these games are in zip files while the disk-based system like the PlayStation uses a different kind of format, which is organized by a queue and bin file. These two files are extremely important for Laka to recognize. But don't worry, as long as you copy them and the game shares the same name, then it won't be a problem. But in order to run PlayStation games specifically, we're going to need the right BIOS file which will go right into our systems folder. Luckily, on the Laka Wikipedia, there is a spreadsheet that shows which BIOS files work for each system. Just Google this specific file name and download it correctly. There are plenty of websites out there to help you find the specific BIOS file, especially the website down below. Drag the file, or in this case, the files for each region code, into the system folder. Now for our ROMs, we're going to make some file folders in the Laka storage folder. And then you're going to drag your ROMs 
into those folders. Just keep in mind how powerful your Wi-Fi connection is or network connection because this will greatly affect the speed of your file transfer. But once you copied all the files in the correct folder, we're going to now jump to Laka and make sure that it recognizes it. So back in Laka, we're going to select scan directory and then we're going to go through each of our folders that we created and then select scan this directory and Laka should be able to produce some menu items with the icons going to the corresponding console. Like we said, we're just testing the ROMs right now. We'll worry about list selection and customization later because as you can see, some games are missing. So let's try out some Super Mario Brothers and check that out, it's working as it should. But if we press our hot button, a bunch of options come up that you can use to customize your experience, such as closing out of the game itself, restarting it, and being able to rewind. Now let's go with a little bit more hardware intensive game. How about Spyro Year of the Dragon? I particularly like this one. And what do you know, it's running really smoothly, which is the main thing that we need to get down when being able to play on Laka. So yeah, these are the basics, but as you can see, we got some of our games running. So stay tuned after our next segment to find out how we can customize Laka itself. <sighs> Whether you care about real-time strategy or the sim genre in general, this title by Paradox Interactive in 2001, known as Majesty, definitely fills that niche. From the look of it, it looks like your typical fantasy real-time strategy game, but unlike those games, it's more of a simulation. That is, your fantasy players on this fantastically realized world are free to explore the world as they see fit. It's up to you to make sure that world is livable. Set in the mystical land of Ardania, you take control of your majesty. And across each mission of this game, you have to make sure that your peasants, archers, warriors, spellcasters, and all kinds of beings alike, so they can quest on in this world unopposed. It's quite a unique feat, actually, combining genres like this to make a very entertaining package. As you can see from the visuals themselves, you gotta love that 2D isometric feel of the late 90s and early 2000s. The design and the mechanics of the game pull no punches either, with all their little inner workings balanced in a way to make the missions doable but not impossible. As long as you think about the needs of your people, as well as keeping an eye on your money intake and your defenses, you should be able to have a profitable and successful kingdom that you can use to kick around the realm. The missions are unique, ranging from saving a prince from a tower, killing rock monsters in the middle of a plane, either killing a wizard or taking control of a peasant who stole his book, and just killing a dragon for fun. God, that was hard. But suffice to say, Majesty is definitely a hidden gem to pick up from the Steam store, and it's usually on sale for around three bucks other than the regular price of 10 bucks, which of course, for that amount of cash, is definitely worth a gem for me. So now we're going to assume that the games that we have added on Laka technically do work. You can select them easily and start them up. But we're going to go over some of the little finer details to fine tune your experience using this. That includes fixing broken shortcut links, and sprucing up the look of it using custom thumbnails and all that jazz. So as you can see from this example here, I have customized icons as well as different kinds of images being displayed. The logo and the start menu. These are all from packs that I found on the internet that you can easily Google online. But what I'm going to do is demonstrate how you can add your own images to create your own custom Laka menu. So let's begin. So first we're going to figure out why some of our ROMs aren't showing under our playlist. It's mainly because that the way that Laka looks up games in its database uses a search tool that's automatic, but we can easily go into the playlist menu and easily edit the names for each entry, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Of course, there's more information about this in the Laka wiki that's in the description below but I'm gonna go over it on my end, just to show you how I completed it. But as you can see, there are files created for each console list that we created 
in Laka. If you click on one, you'll see amalgamation of code. But I'll try to explain this as easily as possible. Let me be frank that all code can be edited within this window here. But what does each line mean? To start with, this line here is the path where the ROM is located, so it's in our storage ROMs folder. But you can see that there's a number sign, which means that this ROM in particular is in a zip file. Luckily, Laka can detect this. The second line is the name that's displayed in Laka itself. The next line is a core, which in simple terms is required for the ROM to run. Then there's the name of the core and then a link to the database entry which is done in many different formats. Some done with a serial number and some done with this particular number. You don't really need this number at all, so you can replace it with the word detect. And then finally, the name of the playlist. There are other ways to fully customize playlists, which you can find on the Laka wiki, but right now we're going as simple as possible, and we're going to change a few lines of code and add some things in. For example, our current playlist for the N64 has Majora's Mask highlighted two times, when in turn it's supposed to be Ocarina of Time. So we're going to check out the ROM name that we put into our Raspberry Pi and make sure that it matches the same path and label as we see here. But as you can see in Laka, Ocarina of Time is right where it's supposed to be. Now that we have some of the names fixed on our playlists, we're going to start adding some artwork, just like from the example before. So one way to add thumbnails to Laka is through the option in Laka itself, where you can automatically download the zip file of all the thumbnails. But we're also going lightweight, and we want to customize to our heart's content. So underneath storage, you're going to click on the folder called thumbnails. We're going to create a folder for each of our systems. Make sure that they match the same name as the playlist name. Now we're going to start adding some of our artwork. So in each of these folders, we're going to add three named folders. Named box arts, named snaps, and named titles. Each of these three is different in their own way on what they display. Box art is, is explanatory, where it's the game's box art, of course, as you can see from these examples that I found. Titles is like the title screen, like the start menu, all that jazz. And snaps, which are video footage stills. But inside each of these folders, you're going to add a piece of artwork and name it the exact same thing as what we have in our playlist file as the ROM name. So for each game that we have, we're going to add a separate piece of artwork for said game, depending on how you want to customize. For example, I have this F-Zero X art displayed as set with these file names inside their respective folder, as displayed here. Make sure you double check the names of all your pictures so they'll load properly in Laka. Luckily, that's why we have WinSCP set up, so you can go back and forth with these adjustments. But back in Laka, we're going to make sure that our advanced settings is checked but once you do that, a plethora of options have just opened up. So under settings, we're going to go to user interface, appearance, until we get to the very bottom of the menu. When we get to the bottom of settings, we're going to see an option for different thumbnails that we can apply, such as the screenshots, the title screens, and the box arts. So select what you want, and as you can see, it should be displayed normally. Of course, if they're not displaying at all, you probably misspelled something for each image or just misplaced an image in a different folder. Lastly, we're going to change our background and our icons, which is definitely easier than what we just did. So if you have a wallpaper in particular that you would like to use as a background, we're going to create a folder in our storage for just that. So underneath settings, we're going to go to appearance once again, and then background and then we're going to click the icon, and then storage, and we're going to find the folder that we just created, and then just apply the image. But of course, underneath this menu in general, there is a way to change your icons, underneath the menu icon theme. But be careful when you apply icon shadows. This could cause the menu to lag a bit, because after all, it is using its CPU to generate this menu. But feel free to experiment with the different icons. But there you go, a customized Laka system with different thumbnails, artwork, icons, and your own games to play on the go. But feel free to look at that document if you want to experiment more with this system. And how about I close this out with playing some Super Mario 64, just like how I remembered it.
Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I know it's been like a billion years since I made a new one, so I hope you like this new format I'm trying out. I'm definitely going to tighten up some of the graphics. This was more of a concept kind of thing, but I hope you like the tutorial nonetheless. Feel free to comment if you have any questions, but also definitely check out those web links in the description for more information. Once again, I'm brought to you by giftsjustforyou.shop. It's a website that has a lot of great stuff on there. Feel free to check it out. So thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.